Hi everybody, it's Sarah. I wanted to show you today the breakdown of an image that I created in my backyard, um, showing you all of the layers and just how I work with uh, textures and location and color and how it all comes together so that you guys don't think that I just go and, and shoot and there you go, there's my image. There's actually a lot that goes into something that looks seemingly simple, so I hope you enjoy. Today I would like to walk you through how I created this image. Uh, it was done in my backyard. Basically what I've been doing uh, during quarantine is a lot of yard work and part of the yard work for me means picking up sticks and branches that have fallen over the winter and just cleaning up all around my yard and I have a lot of trees so I ended up with a lot of uh, small branches which I cut to around three to four feet each and made a long pile of. This was just to keep things neat so that I can burn them easier. Um, but I also had this photo in mind and I've been thinking about it for a year and I decided now was the time to try it. So this was shot entirely in my backyard. I did have one uh, Godox AD200 set up just to throw some light around my face over here. Uh, but otherwise it was done in the middle of the day, so full sunlight. Uh, was fairly warm and it was actually um, quite painful to lie on a pile of sticks. So let me walk you through what this looked like and the images that went into creating it. So I'm just going to turn everything off. Uh, I apologize, it's a little off kilter, but uh, what you can see is what I started with. So this is my backyard, this is what it looks like. There's a tire swing, there are bird feeders, uh, you can see a little bit of my porch over here, and then you just see this pile of sticks, a stone wall, and some, some branches. Um, and this is what it looked like. So I climbed onto this pile of sticks, and once I was on it, I couldn't really move. Um, it was very painful and so trying to change my my body position, my legs, my arms became quite difficult. So um, you can see I have my phone in my hand right here. I'm using it as my trigger to trigger my camera which is um, probably about seven to ten feet away um, and let's take a look at what, uh, what I did first. And actually, I need to turn all my layers off, so I apologize. You'd think uh, for someone that works in Photoshop all the time, I would be better at this, but I am not. Um, oops, shut all these off. Okay, so the very first thing I did is I wanted to get rid of my phone. I didn't, didn't want that trigger in there. So my first layer is just uh, getting rid of the phone, just a different hand. And I can show you a couple of the photos. This photo was what I took the hand from. Um, so I don't care what the rest of my body looked like. I knew I needed to shoot my hand empty. So I, when I'm doing a composite, I don't worry too much. I try to get as much as I can in the first shot, but then I'll shoot different parts of it. So I definitely shot my hand separately. As you can see in the uh, first image, my leg placement is different as well. So let me show you guys. Shot my hand. Uh, this is just a little cleanup layer of the stick that's behind my hand. I couldn't line it up as well. And because the hand was moved, I couldn't just mask it out because you could see the other hand. So it's a little trickery there. Uh, the next thing I did is I had taken a photo with my legs in a different position. So um, believe it's this one so this is another version I had I, I had my face and I did manage to move my my upper leg what I really liked about this one was the leg placement um, I chose to use one where you could see my face which is a little bit unlike me usually you can't see my face in a lot of these images um, but I used this one this one image for actually this arm right here and my legs um, and I will show you that so you can see when I turn this on and off, that is the layer for my legs. Um, and then this is my hand. So I didn't like that my fingers were all splayed out. I didn't think that looked good. It felt a little forced and I wanted to look like 
honestly, I wanted to look like I was dead. Like this was my funeral pyre maybe. Um, and so this, this looked a little too alive. There was too much tension in it. So I swapped it with a, a little softer hand and then I just cleaned it up with this layer right here. So I grouped everything in here and this is the body and this is everything that I did to take it from this pose, which I liked my head, my neck, um, and the overall curve right in here. So I really liked this piece, but I knew I needed to change my hands and my legs. And I'll do that often because I feel like it's easier to change limbs if I can't get it all at once. The other images where maybe my legs were straighter, I didn't like my face, I didn't like my pose, maybe my cheek got too far behind my arm and you couldn't see my face too much. So I did have a lot of options. I shot as long as I could um, on this, which, was probably about 10 minutes um because it was excruciating so um i decided to composite it instead so this is what my body composited looks like now the next thing i did because my original idea is i knew i didn't want all this distraction in the background there's too many trees there's too many things that make it look like a backyard so i actually brought outside um i brought out my backdrop stand and my trusty blue cloth backdrop which i use for almost everything um so no matter what color you see um it's usually this backdrop and i just change the coloring as i need to but i brought this outside but it was a really windy day so it kept falling over it's a really lightweight super cheap uh backdrop stand and i think you guys can see i have these uh office binder clips i'm just going to show you really nice i have regular clips and then i have office binder big binder clips like the things we steal from our offices and use as chip clips um so i have those on it too so this is a really lightweight stand i didn't sandbag it i, I wasn't worried about anything breaking because it's just so cheap um but i knew i wanted a backdrop i knew i i wanted something in there i could easily manipulate and this was already outside so what i decided to do is i actually took and i'm not going to show you but i took a picture of this backdrop i take a picture i'm standing behind it i'd move it over a few feet take another photo move it over a few feet take another photo and i kept going right across the scene so i'm going to show you what that um looked like it's actually really ridiculous but it worked perfect for me right so I started dropping in these backdrops and as you can see you know the wind is blowing here the wind is blowing back so I've got a lot of shadow happening here the wind is blowing it forward so the sun is hitting it more so I've got a lot of different light and color variation so for this light one I just darkened it up with a curve layer I kept adding them in um, all the way across darkening up where I needed to um, just so I could get it at least somewhat uh, similar and you know this isn't the best process but this is this was easiest for me I'd already lugged this outside set it up I picked it up because it had blown over probably two or three times so I just decided to say screw it I'm going to use it um, because it's already out here so this is a layer of just adding in a little bit more, getting rid of the binder clips, I think, darkening things up. Um, so that's my background, right? So I took it from my backyard, lots of trees and distractions, to something that doesn't look good, and I recognize that. However, it um, it's getting there, right? And that's my process. So that's my... That's my background. The next thing I did after I grouped them all is I decided I just wanted to change the hue on the entire group. So I changed it to a little green and normally I don't go green, but what I was trying to do is match the green yellow of the grass down here. And I'm just really building my base coloring for the whole image. So that's how I chose to do it here. And then another hue saturation layer, which affected the whole image. Um, and it doesn't really appear to do anything. So if you can see what it's doing, more power to you. Must be a very slight tweak. So the next thing I did is I actually have a frequency separation layer on here and I do this all the time because I do not iron my backdrop and as you can see it gets a little wrinkly. So um, I just smoothed it out. Again, all I'm doing is just trying to create a non 
distracting background. I'm not trying to create anything perfect, but I just wanted to get rid of some of the wrinkles in it, not even all of them, but this is how I did it. Um, but just by painting colors, um, trying not to make it one uniform bland color, um, but taking some of the discoloration, the darks and the lights from the backdrop itself and coloring it up. And now comes the fun guys, all right? So I, up until this point, have composited and done my backdrop and just got my color tones in kind of the same range. This is where I now start to have a ton of fun. Not that the rest of it isn't fun for me, but what I really love doing is working with textures. And I happen to use a tool called Infinite Texture Panel. Um, if you're not familiar with it, you should be. You can go to Infinite Looks. Dot com, infinite tools I'm sorry infinite tools.com um, look at the infinite texture panel there's a free version if you want to try it and then there's the the paid version which gives you high resolution photos um, ability to use it in commercial work and licensing and all that stuff I'm sure I just said that wrong and they're all cringing um, but this is what I use because I can look through thousands of textures within seconds and it's actually right here I'll just show it to you this is my little plug real quick I come in here and I have all these textures and I can say no I don't want anything any like that and I can click around and I can literally look at thousands of textures and I can say if I want it to be similar, if I want it to be different. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff and this just scratches the surface. There's so much more you can do with this. But that's the tool that I use for my textures so that I just have this unlimited use of them. And it is amazing. So this is where I start to drop in my textures and my textures do a couple of things. They obviously, texture the whole image but i use my textures in color and it actually color tones them a little the image a little bit whether that's good or bad and you like it or don't so you don't have to do that this is just what i do so before i do my color toning work um, and really colorize an image i add in my textures so the first one we've added in is just let's see if i can Oh my goodness, guys, I'm hitting all the wrong keys. Um, <laughs> deselect. Um, is this texture right here? And if I knew what I was doing, I could show you what it is. So it is this, okay? So this is uh, one type that I use a lot. It's steel um, or metal. It's all scratched up. As you can see, there's a space here that I erased. And what that is, is where my body is. So let me drop this back down because I had it pretty low. Let me go back in. And it just adds to, you can see on the bottom, you can see some, some shadowing and it added and it added a little like distracting texture up into my backdrop, but it didn't affect my skin. And I did that on purpose. Um, I will apply textures to my skin, but I don't want it to make my skin look like bad. I wanna separate myself from the texture that I use in the background. The next one I used again is one I can already tell I use all the time. It's one of my favorites. Um, it's paper. So it's, again, we're at a pretty low opacity, 77, but you can see that it's paper. It's very organic. And this will start to give your photos a more painted, painterly feeling. Um, so I use this all the time. I did let this one go on top of my skin. You can see there's no mask here. Um, and then because I have this weird thing that I always use textures in threes, I don't know why it's just where I feel most comfortable. So I have my third one here that will turn it on. And as you can see, this really, really, um, texturize the image. So let me show you what this one looks like only at 24%. But yeah, so look at that. Um, again, I painted it off of my skin. Um, which seems smart because it's a pretty heavy texture. So at 24%, you can see what it's doing if you particularly look up in this part of the image right here, it's adding in a ton of detail. So what this texture did for my bland, crappy backdrop is made it look like 
it belonged, right? It's starting to blend in. And you can see we've already got some blending. And because of the gold coloring in this texture and then the, um, the faded coloring of this texture, it's really along the lines of my skin tones, the browns are in this image. So when I'm choosing my textures, I'm not just looking at the texture, but I'm actually looking at the coloring um, on these. And what I didn't talk about is what I'm setting the blend modes to, and I apologize. So each texture I put on a certain blend mode. So the first one was overlay, the second one was soft light, and the next one was overlay. I will tell you guys, I use overlay, soft light, and hard light almost all of the time. Those are my three go-tos. It's just the feel that I get. It usually brings the texture in, in a softer, more natural way. So those are the ones I use almost all of the time. So I've added in my textures and now, you know, now I'm, I'm getting really happy with the image. I'm starting to get excited about the image. So now this is where I just work on all the detail for a little while. So I've just clean up. So this layer right here, you can just see I'm cleaning up, filling in some spaces that were a little bit empty. Um, this one, oh, this is one I just cleaned up my skin a little bit. So if you look at my skin, there were some dark spots. I just lightened them up. I do some dodge and burn, and sometimes that's to make my skin look better. Sometimes that's just localized, so lightening and darkening of parts of the image. So this one is definitely skin work. Um, so there's some shadow under my chin I don't like. So I lightened it, I lightened under my nose. So it's very subtle, you can see around my stomach. There's just getting rid of some of the shadows and making your skin tone a little prettier. Um, so I definitely do that as well especially if I've dropped something grungy on myself. Um, and sometimes when you're erasing a texture, it, because I'm using colored textures, it changes the color of like your skin underneath it. So sometimes I'll just dodge and burn away some of the shadowing of a texture instead of erasing it. There's so many different ways you can do it. That just happens to be the one I do because I'm comfortable with dodge and burn. Um, I have another hue saturation layer, which again, I don't really see any changes, so it's very subtle. <laughs> or there's a mask on it, so I probably dropped it in there and did nothing with it. That's probably what happened. Um, this layer right here is literally affecting this one little thing. This thing was catching my eye, and all I could think of was it looks like I'm holding a little tiny sword or a wand. So, um, oops. So I just I just got rid of most of it. That's all I was doing there. So it was distracting me. Um, here's a burn layer. So again, um, I've got this stick, this stick, and then this one, which are much lighter than all the rest, just um, probably older, different type of wood, a lot drier, so they're much lighter and brittle. So instead of getting rid of them, um, I just darkened them down with a burn layer, and so then they don't distract you quite as much. So at this point, I felt like the image was in a really good place. There wasn't any more compositing I needed to do. It was pretty clean. So I was going to start color toning. And the first thing I did um, with this one is I dropped um, an action from the Color Lab. If you are not familiar with Bella Kotex Color Lab, you should be. Um, so this one's called Hi Billy. I really like it. And I dropped it on there and it kind of gave me some warm red tones and um, darkened it up. And it's Hi Billy and it's from her Stranger Tones 2 collection. It's really awesome. So you should totally check her out. So I dropped that in there and I, I'm literally now I'm starting to, to, to fall in love with this image. It's nice and warm. It's feeling inviting in a very weird way, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so... I went in, there was still some more distracting stuff. I did notice when I was compositing, guys, I made some mistakes, this happens. So um, right in here, I'll zoom in. You can see some hard edges, like I just got lazy when I was compositing apparently. So, um, so this layer right here just fixes my mistakes. So if you mess something up, you can just fix it. So I didn't have to go back and, and do anything. And actually I tried to go back and, and it just wasn't working. So I just created a new layer and I fixed it myself. Um, so then I did a merge visible. I did finally merge everything in um, into this one layer right here. 
Um, as you can see, I do not name my layers, so you purists can yell at me, that's fine, but layer 17 is a merge visible stamp. And then it's just some more cleanup, right? So a little bit of cleanup around the top, a little bit around the bottom. Um, just just a bunch of just a bunch of cleaning layers blending and cleaning that's all i'm doing there and then this one called base is a layer stack um i used infinite color panels and just like infinite texture panel i have a panel for coloring it's right here so infinite color panel you click on it and it just generates an infinite amount of color combinations gives you all of the layers lets you change them and since i usually use um, a couple of stacks of these or rounds of these as I call them um, I renamed them so this is my base color you'd think that Hi Billy by the color lab would have been my base color but um, I just that one's named its own thing so it didn't matter but the infinite color stack um, because I use multiples I have to rename them so I always rename my first one to base um, it's the weird thing it's like the only thing I rename so we're gonna pop on my base coloring and I actually um, it's funny right so I'm loving the warm tones I think they're great and then I get this random color in here and it brings the warms down and it makes it look a lot more skin tone and I immediately just fell in love with the blues and the yellows and went I don't need warm this is great so this is my base coloring the next thing I, I started to do, because I really like it, I thought I was really done with the color. And so I started working with curves to lighten and darken. So here's a layer to just give it a little vignette. Here's an opposite one to just light up the center of the image. See, lights up my body, brings that light in there. Um, and then here's another one to give it a little more of a vignette. And I do this a lot um, to create some directional lighting, especially when you're outside in midday in full sun. I don't really have a lot of directional lighting. I did have a flash to give me a little bit of light, um, but uh, I'll do this just to bring your eye to where I, where I want it to be a lot with curves. Um, this next layer is to just clean up a little bit of the edge. I've, I've recropped this and moved this a few times. So I was cleaning up the edges on this. So that's all this one's doing. And then this one called final um, is, it's funny, sometimes I love final and final too. So this is my final coloring. So I decided I wasn't 100% happy with this coloring. Let me try some more. So I found this one which really just kind of gave it a lot more contrast darkened it down a bit and i decided that's where i'm gonna stop that is actually my final coloring of the image and then my last two layers are just cleaning up so this one right here that i'm clicked on if you look at this part of the image it's really crisp compared to what i did over here which um was a lot of clone stamp and just giving it a painted feeling so you felt like you were um, stepping into a painting and it was blending in with that background a little bit more and this was way too crisp and I got some wonderful feedback on that so I decided to make it a little less crisp with this layer and then the very last one just fixes those edges up and this is our end result so it's a ton of layers I always have a ton of layers because I start out with a, a pose a feeling and then I just kind of go from there and I love to play so we have several layers in here um, but we took it from this which is just an unprofessional looking I'm naked on a pile of sticks in my backyard to this which is a lot more of a story um, you can't tell where I am you can't tell that I'm at a home you can't tell that uh, my legs were all wonky and it was super uncomfortable um, or that my backdrop kept falling down in the wind. So I was able to take it from what is an unprofessional looking snapshot with a bunch of distraction to what I would like to call a fine art piece that tells a story, makes you think, wants to get you to look at it a little bit more. Um, so that's my process. I hope you liked walking through this. I know I did it really slow and I'll speed up and talk less next time. Uh, but this was my making of what I call a jagged sleep. And that's very obviously due to all the sticks that were, were stabbing me while I made it.
So thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye.